Let's head on down to Michael's and we're going to grab us a wood crate. We're also going to need some pallet wood, so let's get that out. First thing we're going to do is grab a scrap piece of plywood. We're going to cut this the same width and same length as four of the wood crates. Once we got it cut, we're going to go to the scrap pile and grab some scrap wood. We're going to make the legs, make sure they're all even at six inches. Next step is to take the scrap wood that we have for the legs and we're going to pre-drill and put them on our piece of plywood. Next, we're going to use a lot of wood glue here. We're going to put it out all over the area that we need on the piece of plywood and we're going to put that crate down, but not just the glue. We're going to use some finished nails to hold it in place. Once we get that first one on in the middle, we're going to put the next one on to the side of it and work our way down with the wood crates till we have four of them. Once we do that, we're going to get some primer and we're going to put it all over the wood on the wood crates. We need this because primer helps the paint stick and adhere to the wood. Without it, you might get some flaking. I did notice though, I didn't like the bottom of how the wood crates looked. So I did do a little trim piece of one by two pine and I put it on there. Again, I did use some glue to make sure it stays in place. Next it's time for paint. We want to make sure we get a good high quality paint and this can be the color of your choice. For me, I went with white. It's what goes with the decor in our house. And I'm going to put two coats of that paint on there and I got to make sure I do get that trim. The one thing I don't need to do is the top. Once I get all that done, I'm going to go ahead and cut that pallet wood up and start splitting it. I just need small pieces. So I'll cut one side and some of them will have nails in them. So we're going to go ahead and pop those out. Some of the nails just come right out real easy. Once you get that nail out, toss it away. Next, I'm going to measure the middle of the top of our pallets. Again, we have four of them. And then I'm going to use a speed square to get a 45 degree angle because that's what's going to start our pattern. Take your first piece of pallet wood and you're going to lay that down. And I'm going to use some glue spread around, but it's not going to be just glue again. We're going to use some brad nails. Put those in there and that's going to hold it in place till the glue dries. Next, we're going to go with that second piece. Again, do you see the pattern starting to merge here? We're going to put that down, use a few brad nails to hold it in place, and then we're going to put the next one. See, this one's bigger. You can alternate as you go down. Now, what I wanted to do was make sure that I went down, chose the piece I want. You can see that it left some of the nail holes because it gives a wonderful look to this decor. Just keep working your way down, glue and brad nails all the way to the end. Once I'm done with the top, it's time to straighten it up. I'm going to put a guide board on and I'm going to take my skill saw and I'm going to cut it all the way down the edge, being very careful to go slow and make sure I get that nice straight piece. Now it's time to go ahead and cover all the edges with some trim board. And once I get that trim board, it's time to precondition the wood. This is very simple to do. You just wipe on this precondition because it is made of pine. And when you stain it, it'll get blotchy. So I'm going to put this preconditioner on. And when it's ready and it dries for 30 minutes to an hour, it's time to put some stain on. I went with some dark walnut on this one. Now watch this. Because I preconditioned the wood, it looks a lot better and it doesn't make it blotchy. I'm going to go ahead and use a towel to put this on instead of a brush. I'm going to put it all over the top and the sides where the trim piece is. Once I get this stain on and let it dry, the last thing we got to do is put some polyurethane on. That's going to give it that professional finish. It's going to take two coats and you can do three if you want. That's going to make it durable and ready to go. Once it's all dried up, look at this. This thing turned out absolutely amazing. Just four crates and some free pallet wood turned it into this work of art. I couldn't have been more happy, but what I wanted to do was use it for a TV stand and it went great with a new TV I bought for the family. I hope you enjoyed this easy DIY crate TV stand. Thank you for watching Home Talk and we'll catch you next time. My daughter purchased a large television and once you know it, her old TV stand was too small. She liked the old stand, so I just had to make the top a little bit bigger. All we really needed for this project was molding and an unfinished wooden top. I laid the board on top of the stand and measured to center it. Using my miter saw, I cut the molding to size. I pre-hammered finishing nails into the molding, added wood glue to the edge of the board, and hammered the molding into place. I continue to measure, glue, and nail molding to all three sides of the board.
to secure the board to the old stand, I pre-drilled and added screws to the top. Then filled the holes with wood fill. I also filled in the edges with wood fill. Once the wood fill was dry, I sanded it smooth. I applied a one coat of a dark stain with polyurethane and allowed it to dry. Then I sanded using a fine grit sandpaper. To ensure the stand wouldn't fall over, I bought furniture straps. I measured and screwed one end of the strap to the TV stand, then measured and screwed the other end to the wall. Pulling down on the strap, I moved the stand closer and closer to the wall until it was where we wanted it to be. Now the TV fits perfectly and my daughter can still use her old stand. I hope this inspires you to reuse a piece of furniture instead of buying something new. So I ran down to Home Depot to grab some decorative trim. What we want to do is cover the frame of the TV. Your key to this is to turn all your miter saws to 45 degrees. That's going to be every cut that you make. Start with your first cut right on the end at 45 degrees. And then you're going to measure right from the inside cut all the way down the length of the TV. That's where your next miter cut is going to be. Turn the saw to the other way and give it another 45 degree cut. Once you get that cut, you're gonna go ahead and match it to the next part. That way you don't have to use a tape measure and you can get the top and bottom frame the exact same size. Just use a pen to mark it out and cut it. Once you get all four pieces cut, lay it out, make sure it's all smooth and ready to go. But the secret to this is you gotta have glue. That's going to hold all the pieces together. Now, just don't lay out a bead. You want to smooth it out so it has as much adhesion as possible. As the glue is laid out, just go ahead and put it right up next to it and make sure you get those nice smooth lines. Next, you got to get some flat corner braces. That's what's going to hold these frames together. Just mark out the holes, but you got to be careful. We need to pre-drill all the holes. That way the screws hold inside this MDF wood as easy as possible. Once you pre-drill, the screws go in without a drill. You can just use a regular old screwdriver to put them in. Make sure you get it nice and tight, but don't over tighten. We just want to make sure it's snug and it's holding in place. These corner braces do a great job holding it together. Once you get all four sides, we got to build a box. That way we can cover the sides of the TV. I use a little bit of one by four. And again, you got to use that glue. It holds the sides together. Again, we're going to use 45 degree cuts and look how smooth that is. You can use screws or nails, but I go ahead and use a brad nailer. It's real easy to use and it puts a nice fine fastener right inside. I just use three on the side and it gives it a nice smooth look. Now, Again, we're going to go with the glue. we got to put it all the way around the box frame we just built because we're going to lay the frame on top. If you measured right and did good and took your time, it's going to fit just right. The last thing you need to do on this is use the brad nailer again and put just a few brad nails to hold it together. Once you get those in, let's cover up them nail holes with a little bit of spackle. Just let that dry and sand it clean. Now it's time for some gold paint. Any type will work, but as you can see, it's going to take a couple of coats. I did put three coats on here. Let them dry about half an hour in between coats.
the next thing we got to do is we got to put a little bit of Velcro on the TV. That's going to hold the frame in place once we install it. It just looks amazing. When you're not watching TV, you've got your own portrait. I hope this inspired you to build your own DIY television frame. Thanks for watching Home Talk, and we'll see you again.